right, we've been doing all this integration, which is just simply finding the antiderivative. Then when we added the piece of the fundamental theorem of calculus, that's where we were finding area. So we're going to do the same thing, but now this is going to be the chain rule once again. So remember the chain rule. So it's the reverse of the chain rule. Remember you're given a derivative and you want to find the antiderivative. If you remember with the chain rule, you had the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside, and that's what this is showing. So how you will know when you have to use substitution, typically you have multiplication like this, but it'll work the same way as the chain rule. You'll see that you're going to use substitution for one piece, okay, so one piece, say, the um, derivative of the, the outside, and when you take that derivative, it'll give you the other piece. All right, so um, if a function has this form, its antiderivative is working backwards, the composite function. So to make a substitution in an integral, you can use any variable that you want, but typically they call this u substitution, and they use the letter u. So let u be the inside function. Um, for the inside function, I typically tell students when you're first learning this, just like with chain rule, inside will typically be inside parentheses, um, inside, say, numerator, denominator, so a fraction, inside a square root. So the same thing that you did when we did the chain rule. And then when you take the derivative of what you've substituted, it should match your outside function. Now, as you're going to see, it won't always match exactly, but the first couple of examples I'm going to show it does, so you kind of get in the groove, and then you substitute back whatever you let u equal. All right, so kind of, kind of weird, but we can do it. And so, and that's what this is showing here, the inside function, typically parentheses, radical, square root, cube root, um, an exponent, same, and then, or a denominator. All right, so make a substitution to find this integral. Um, again, we're looking for the antiderivative. So when I look at this, I know I can't do this normally because I see the multiplication there. So what I want to do is I want to substitute part of this that when I take the derivative of it, it gives me the other part. And I say that so you start to look ahead, but we said that the exponent can be something that I might look at. So what I'm going to do is over here, I'm going to say if I let u equal x squared, all right, then what happens, this becomes e to the u. Yes, because u equals x squared. But this other business here is a problem because it doesn't have a u in it and they need to be the same variables. So what I could do is I could take the derivative of what I just substituted. So the derivative of x squared would be 2x dx. Why 2x dx? Because remember, it's real, oops, it's really the derivative of u with respect to x. And then what I did is I just multiplied both sides by dx, and that's how I get this. So this matches this exactly, which means where I see 2x dx, I could just substitute du. Now, this is easy, right? The antiderivative of e to the anything is e to the anything. Okay, and then plus c. And then just don't forget, most important step, substitute back your u value. All right, so if you look at this and you say, well, how do I know if that's actually right? Take the derivative of it. x squared, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Bless me. So the derivative of e to the anything is e to the anything times the derivative of the anything. Well, the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of c is just a constant, so that goes away. You notice something? That's exactly that. All right, so you could check it. Remember, this is my antiderivative. Antiderivative. This is my derivative to start with, and I see that it checks. 
Uh, looking at another example, if I look here and I say, well, we said if you have something in parentheses. So why not let u equal x squared plus 1? All right, so I'm going to substitute where x squared plus 1 is. I'm going to put u. And then when I take the derivative, I get 2x, and that's just a 0, dx, once again, I won't do the, well, I'll do it one more time. Remember, I'm doing this, where I'm multiplying both sides by dx. This matches exactly, it won't always will when it doesn't, we'll figure out what to do, but it does. And so where I see 2x dx, I put in du. Now I have something I know how to take the antiderivative of, because remember this business here, and of course plus c. So I get u to the 6 over 6 plus c. And then what don't you forget? You got it. Plug back in what you substituted. So u is x squared plus 1. And I get my answer. So you're just kind of manipulating this to put it in a form that's easy to find the antiderivative. Okay, let's look at another one. We said, well, it could be a denominator. So let's try the denominator is I let u equal x squared plus 4. So this becomes 1 over u. I take the derivative and I get 2x, of course the 4 is a constant, dx, which matches that exactly. So where I see 2x dx, I put du. What's the antiderivative of 1 over u? Do you remember? Do you remember? Do you remember? You better remember. And then finally, my last step, I plug back in what I substituted to get my final answer. So basically what we're doing is we have this whole, you know, same business going on, Leibniz in our integral notation, and we'll actually get to where we plug in values. And so I have a function here. And what I end up doing is I substitute u for that piece. And then for the dx piece, our because it has to match our variable of integration, that becomes my du. All right, so this first part is just kind of getting your feet wet. And I, I know you're saying, well, every single one of these, the derivative was 2x. Well, that's not going to happen. I just wanted to repeat some for you to kind of, you know, get a feel for the substitution. And then we'll keep on 